This week, two very unique ships sailed into the harbor in Michigan City. Their mission is to serve as floating museums and remind visitors of the ingenuity and skill that helped shape the world as we know it. Set against an industrial backdrop, the vessels also provide a striking contrast to modern shipping on the Great Lakes. Thousands of ships and barges travel the Great Lakes each year, but these two stand out. These are uh, what we call space shuttles of the 1400s, and uh, these ships were, were used for exploration during that time. These ships are what are known as Portuguese caravels, and uh, Columbus found out they were extremely sturdy ships. The Nina and Pinta are replicas of the ships Christopher Columbus used during his voyages to the Americas, beginning in 1492. So he made four voyages in total, uh, to totaling about 12 years. And uh, the first voyage a little under a year, you know, the Santa Maria goes down, the, the largest of the three ships. And uh, the later voyage is about two to three years apiece. The uh, Nina is an exact replica, constructed entirely by hand, but the Pinta is a little larger than scale. While Columbus's actions after he crossed the Atlantic Ocean are often the topic of debate, the voyage itself remains an impressive feat, and that's what motivated historians to recreate his ships about 20 years ago. Back in the uh, mid-80s, mid it was uh, John Sarsfield discovered a, a group of shipwrights in uh, a little town called Valencia, Brazil, that were still utilizing the same techniques that dated back over 500 years ago. So they were still using the same techniques that dated back to the time when these ships were actually constructed and the techniques were passed down through generations, and uh, it was eighth generation Portuguese shipwrights that constructed the two ships that you see here. They built the uh, ship entirely by what their family taught them throughout generations. There's no blueprints. And in terms of the rigging and what they carried on board these ships, that was all very well documented in Columbus's log. The age of exploration may be over, but the Great Lakes remain a thriving and vital transportation route. A 2009 report from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers found that the prosperity of many of the nation's key industries, including iron, steel, and energy production, are dependent on the Great Lakes navigation system. Captain Sanger says for his historic ships, the lakes provide a very different experience than the oceans. Uh, the Great Lakes, you know, if, if, if the weather's rough, then obviously the, the waves are a lot closer together than they are out in the ocean, so it can uh, be a lot more, uh, bob like a cork a lot more the Great Lakes you would out in the open ocean. Just as modernization has reduced the number of workers in many industries, these ships and their limited routes are crewed by fewer men than the ones sailed by Columbus. We traveled about six or seven on each ship on average. Columbus had uh, 24 aboard the Pinta and uh, 26 aboard the Nina. And, uh, they all worked eight and slept out on the main deck. So there wasn't a whole like, sleeping quarters for the crew. It was all just in the main deck, open up to the elements, where down below they would have cargo and livestock. Despite the primitive conditions, Sanger says many of his crew remain drawn to the marine lifestyle and these unique ships. They all sleep on the ship practically year round. You know, all the crew will volunteer. You know, uh, we ask for three to four weeks and some of our crew members have been on that uh, three or four years. The Nina and Pinta will be docked in Michigan City and available for tours through September 8th.